Oh, so far we have seen the short range arrangement of atoms in a solid and when this short range arrangement which is dictated by the nature of the bond does not continue in the solid in all the three dimensions over long distances the solid becomes non crystalline however if it continues in three dimensions all through in the long range solid is crystalline having had a look at the crystal structures or this kind of arrangement in crystalline and non crystalline states now we shall talk about real crystals and real crystals are having imperfections in them what i refer to as crystal imperfections so today we shall look at crystal imperfections as we defined crystal in this course the space lattice which is an infinite array of points in three dimensional space plus the basis which is a motif which cons consists of some number of atoms or molecules which form a group and that arrangement that orientation of the group continues in three dimensions at each lattice point that is what we call the motif. From this definition space lattice which is an array of points in infinite array of points the definition of the crystal should be infinite because on every lattice point a group of atoms which is the motif is situated and this arrangement of points in three dimensional space is infinite. So ultimately what should I end up with a crystal which is infinite I do not have any solid or a crystal which is infinite in nature they are all very very finite and that is all the real crystals. Now when I talk about a real crystal let us say a cylindrical crystal like this you can just this pen you can consider a cylindrical crystal and if you look at this cylindrical crystal this cylindrical surface the atoms whatever the lattice points were there on those lattice points the atoms or group of atoms is sitting but it is not continuing beyond the cylindrical surface. So what happens to those atoms which are there on the cylindrical surface they have neighbors and the bonds formed inside the crystal but outside they do not have anything that does not mean the space lattice does not exist space lattice exists but that motif is not sitting on those lattice points as a result these atoms which form the surface or which are on the exterior they do not have bonds continued or they do not have neighbors continued in this space they have neighbors within the crystal inside and you know that whenever a bond is formed energy of both the atoms is lowered that is the bond energy. In this case you can say that you had an infinite crystal from where in this region you have removed the neighbors. Once we have removed the neighbors from the cylindrical surface of the crystal all these atoms on the surface have higher energy as compared to those which are inside the cylinder and this constitutes an obvious imperfection in the crystal because in a crystal I have a region which is the exterior which is its exterior and has all the atoms which have higher energy than the atoms which are inside. So therefore it is an imperfection right. So that is what I mean by the imperfection
we shall see that therefore the external surfaces of a crystal become the obvious imperfections. The external surface of a crystal becomes an obvious defect, an obvious imperfection. In other words, I can now also say that what I have described about this external surface, it could be could have been a flat surface, not a cylindrical surface. These by their presence, what I am calling the imperfection, they are like the external surface, increasing the energy of the system energy of the crystal, in other words enthalpy of the crystal, a bond form lowers the enthalpy, bond broken therefore increases the enthalpy. At the same time, it is likely to add to the configurational entropy. So, these imperfections are increasing the enthalpy, they are increasing the configurational entropy. It all depends now whether the combination of the two can lower the free energy or not. If it can lower the free energy, I shall have the stable configurations of imperfections in the material. If not, if the imperfection is present, it would like to get out of the crystal and lower the free energy of the crystal in case it is present. Right. Like the external surfaces, we also have imperfections in the interior of the crystal like we have seen just the how what has happened to the atoms on the surface, they are, do not have neighbors and therefore the energy has gone up. Like that there could be regions inside the crystal where the energy of the system goes up and because of that the configuration entropy can also go up. So, therefore, we have to see those situations inside the crystal. That is what I was trying to discuss by their presence when there is once there is enthalpy increase at the same time there is a configurational entropy increase the delta g which is delta h minus t delta s it could be less than 0 it could be more than 0 if it is more than 0 by their presence imperfections are increasing the free energy if it is less than 0 it is lowering the free energy so if the lower and bring it to a situation where the for that configuration I have the minimum free energy, it is stable equilibrium and these imperfections are in thermodynamic equilibrium. Otherwise, these imperfections will not be in thermodynamic equilibrium <coughs> and therefore would always have the tendency wherever they get a chance or whenever they get a chance to get out of the crystal. Okay. Now, another thing which is an observation that the imperfections which I have talked about like I talked about the surface of a crystal, if you work out the area of these atoms which are there on the surface, work out the that means and the thickness they occupy and the crystal you can work out the volume. So, that volume of the crystal is in defect region or in imperfect region. If you consider this as the total fraction of the total volume of the crystal, it shall turn out to be fraction of a percent. It shall turn out to be a fraction of a percent, it is a very small volume. Even if I consider those which are going to be, I am going to talk about inside the internal defects, internal imperfections or interior of the crystal, they also do not constitute a huge amount of the volume of the crystal as imperfection. These are usually a small fraction and this fraction can be very high 10 to the power minus 4 is a very high fraction and such high fractions sometimes we do see around just before the melting point. The lower temperatures I may have less of them, but there are certain other kinds 
which at lower temperature unable to go out. So, in other words, what I am trying to say is the fraction of a percent of a particular imperfection or fractional volume occupied by an imperfection is a very small. At room temperature, I might have the fraction of the order of of the order of 10 to the power minus 17. that is 1 out of 10 to the power 17 is the volume which is defective or in perfection. So, it is a very small which we are talking about small volume. If such a small volume as I said earlier as engineers we are in the interested in the working of the material not in the rigorous of these properties and these uh, things. So, why am I concerned about such small imperfection or such small volumes of imperfections? in the crystals. I am concerned because of the reason there are properties of the material which are sensitive to the structure. The material properties in general can be classified two kinds. One are structure sensitive that is why I am worried about. In this the imperfections can alter a few orders of magnitude the value of the property say volume fraction of the order of 10 to the power minus 2 or 10 to the power minus 5 in that range the volume fraction of the defect can enhance the property by two orders of magnitude like let us say for example electrical resistivity is 1. right and then strength of the crystals is another one. Electrical resistivity, the strength, these are structure sensitive properties right, but then there are other properties which are structure insensitive say for example, elastic modulus. If the defect is present in the order of half a percent, the modulus might get affected to that uh, extent, that is all, or the density of the solid. If in copper you add 10 percent zinc, the density might get shifted towards zinc about 10 percent or may not be. So, that is what I am trying to say is the effect on the density of the solid or the crystal elastic modulus some properties where effect is marginal of the same order and therefore, we are not really concerned so much about the defects there, but we shall have to look at the role of these defects there as well, but in here it is very important talking about the electrical resistivity talking about the strength of the solid it is very very uh, essential for us to understand because the presence of the defects can affect them a few orders of magnitude. You understand suppose I have a material like uh, steel which has its strength of the order of 250 mega Pascal. It is possible for me by introducing these imperfections to make it to 2000 mega Pascal, an order of magnitude change, it is possible. Aluminum alloys, it is possible for me to change their strength from to the tune of 70 mega Pascal to maybe 550 mega Pascal. So, this is what the d imperfections are doing to the strength. Similarly, the electrical resistivity like a semiconductor which may have its resistivity in the range of 10 to the power minus 4 minus 5 ohm meter can be made to go up to the order of 10 to the power minus 2 minus 1 ohm meter right. 
So that is these are the things which can be a uh, taking place uh, in the properties the change in property a few orders of magnitude. Now before we go to look at the interior defects rather than the exterior defect which I refer to the external surface the inside the geometry of these defects can be talked about like we talk about in geometry a point a line a plane or a surface and then the volume. So when I talk about this geometry of an imperfection which is a point imperfection point imperfection is a volume this is a small volume centered around a point which could extend from 1 to 2 atomic diameters. It is that way not just a mere geometrical point, it is a small volume around it right. But we call it a point defect because it is geometrically localized at that point. Similarly, there could be lines lines could be straight lines, line could be curved lines, the curvilinear lines usually and we give them a special name these are called dislocations. Again around a line let us say this is some line there would be a volume which is a defect region. this volume or this diameter of the cylindrical region around the line could extend from 2 to 5 atomic diameters. Again it is a volume ok. Similarly a surface interior surface there are 2 types we shall see them they are planes means crystallographic planes but they will have certain thickness this could also be about 2 to 3 atomic diameters or this could be a surface curvilinear surface. like the cylindrical surface we talked about it could be just something like this some surface extending like that you know. So there could be surfaces and there could be volumes. Volume usually we will not be devoting much time but those of you who have gone through the manufacturing process course they must have shown you in the castings the voids pores what you call the porosity in the solid there there is no material there no atoms there it is not lattice points are not there they are there but atoms are not there it is a volume extending into a few millimeters or a fraction of a millimeter if it is a very fine pore. So this is what I mean by volume defect or in a crystalline solid I may have an impurity like a slag included like in steel or in copper that is a glassy phase it is a glassy material a small volume which could not be a irregular shape and that is a slag inclusion it is a hard and brittle material otherwise a tough and ductile material ok that is a volume imperfection. Beyond that we will not be talking about the volumes but we shall talk about the other three and we start today with the first one the point imperfections that is what we shall try to look at today the point imperfections which are geometrical points 
I am showing you some of these here. This is, let us say, a kind of a metallic crystal. In this metallic crystal, first of all, let us look at this point where no atom is sitting, there is a site for the atom to sit, but atom is not sitting. <laughs> As a result, this bond length, this bond length has gone up. Distance between the second neighbor here has gone up. So, all these atoms which are here around the circle, they have a higher energy. The neighbors are disturbed, bonds are broken. So, enthalpy has gone up here in this region. Because the enthalpy going up, we shall also see there is an increase in entropy as well, right? Configuration entropy, particularly if I am maintaining the constant temperature. This, since it is not there or this atomic site is vacant, I simply call it by the name vacancy. Sometimes people do call it vacant site or it can be called simply the vacancy, okay. That is the name we give to it is. Then I have already talked about solid solutions, one the interstitial kind, the other the substitutional kind. It is a different kind of an atom sitting in the matrix. Interstitial impurity atom, now I am calling it an impurity, maybe if it is not wanted. Sometimes added purposely, even then you can call it impurity plus not the matrix atom and it is sitting in the interstitial void, right. Thereby, they are compressing all the neighbors here, the electron clouds and in this volume which I have shown here, the energy of the material has gone up because the electron clouds are compressed. So, the enthalpy has gone up. This is called an interstitial defect or interstitial impurity atom. This is a crystal imperfection. Here you see the crystal is perfect, but right not here. Same way the substitutional impurity atom which could be bigger or could be smaller. If it is bigger, it causes the compressions in this volume. If it is smaller, it causes tensions in this volume. So, electron clouds have to extend to form the bond with it for a smaller one and for a bigger one they get compressed. So, there again there is an increase in enthalpy here. This is a substitutional impurity atom and this can be as I said already two kinds bigger one and the smaller one. Then we have a self interstitial, a little less likely though, but it is possible. The atom of the same matrix is sitting into the VK rather the lattice uh, sorry the void space interstitial void space. If you recall the close pack structures when I talked about interstitial void space is tetrahedral and octahedral. Bigger one is the octahedral with 0.414 size that is 41.4 percent size, but this is the 100 percent size which is squeezed in 41.4 percent let us say it is going to squeeze the neighborhood very much and this region will be little more, little more volume where the bonds are strained and therefore, there is an extra enthalpy here because of that. Enthalpy caused by this, increase caused by this is very large. It is called self interstitial. Self interstitial defect is also named as interstitial C defect. TITI comes twice, interstitial C defect, okay. So, that is the self interstitial. So, these are the kind of defects we generally see in metallic crystals or the alloys. <coughs> in covalent crystals where the sharing of electrons is taking place, 
we may see some defects like these we can see is quite possible yes please what is the difference between interstitial and the substitutional atom this is the question is asking an atom is interstitial if it is sitting in the interstitial void space which is not the regular atomic site in the given matrix crystal if the impurity atom or the substitute uh, atom is going to substitute for the matrix atom it is a substitutional atom now bigger and smaller when i talk about the interstitial atom interstitial size is as just i said 41.4% i can have 60% or 70% of the size but when i talk about substitutional impurity atoms sizes may not be differing by 15 20% or maybe 30% more that's all i cannot have more, much more difference there If the size becomes more uh the size difference becomes more it's more likely a smaller one will go in the interstitial only okay so because the tendency to have as many electrons in the outermost orbit as possible because no way they are going to make it eight metallic crystals in covalent crystals this vacancy is possibility but it will create lot of enthalpy because sp3 bonds are not going to be there there no neighbors to form the bond so enthalpy increase will be tremendous right it is so high that it may be very difficult for me to see a vacancy in a diamond crystal but not so high in silicon and germanium which are down the uh, particular uh, group and as i go down in a group it's a covalent nature the bond is decreasing okay and therefore that's not uh, so difficult there but in diamond it's going to be very large enthalpy increase and i may not see many of these there or i may not see any at room temperature but this kind of defect is quite possible the substitutional impurity atom which we shall see in semiconductors like silicon where i dope it with phosphorus or i dope it with boron i dope it with gallium and things like that you know so this doping which i do it will be a substitutional impurity atom sp3 bonds are still satisfied what is not satisfied what is going to be affected is the number of electrons around this may not be 4 or may not be 3 or may, may not be 4 it may be 3 or it may be 5 or it may be 6 so that's depending upon what impurity i'm adding that's going to make the difference but four bonds can still be formed however this interstitial defect is rather very difficult to have in covalently bonded crystals like diamond silicon germanium why it's difficult to have it's not possible to have more than 4 sp3 bonds are going to be there if it goes and sits in the interstitial void space that's just not allowed four sp3 bonds this look this is sharing taking place and it's a localized sharing it's not delocalized sharing like metals so therefore this is not possible rather improbable to have this kind of defect in covalently bonded crystals same is true about the self interstitial you will not likely to see these most likely you will see these kind of defects or you can see these in covalently bonded crystals so vacancies could be there substitutional impurity atoms can be there now let's look at the point imperfections in ionic crystals i try to make an arrangement of an ionic crystal by having two different kinds of spheres smaller ones the dark ones and the lighter ones the bigger ones the anions and the cations 
ok. In this it is possible for us to have a cation missing from its site, but once the cation goes out from its site it takes with it the charge positive charge. To make the crystal electrically neutral I must also remove the negative charge the anion not necessarily in the neighborhood it could be from far apart somewhere in the crystal. So and when a cation is gone anion is also gone and the combination forms a pair. This pair of vacant locations of cation and anion is called the Schottky imperfection or Schottky defect. Now it is all right like the structure I showed like for sodium chloride I say that one sodium ion is missing, one chlorine ion is missing, the one positive charge and one negative charge both are gone, crystal is electrically neutral no problems. But if I have calcium chloride CaCl2, one calcium ion is missing, I must have two chlorine ion missing simultaneously. So, the pair would consist of two chlorine vacancies and one calcium vacancy. In other words, when I talk about a pair, it is a formula unit sodium chloride, one sodium, one chlorine, calcium chloride, one calcium, two chlorine. One formula unit is not there sitting on its side, that is what is Schottky imperfection. Is that clear? The other most commonly seen defect is. Frankel imperfection whereby a cation displaces itself from its regular site and goes and sits on another interstitial void. This is its regular site and this is not its regular site. So, it goes and sits another interstitial void. Not that it is going and sitting close to the next cation, but some other interstitial void space near nearby in the neighborhood it is going and sitting there. I am talking about a 3 dimensional structure. So, this displacement of a cation from its regular site to an interstitial site is what is called a Frankel imperfection. In here there is no problem of the charge neutrality because cation has to be there in the crystal it is there, but it is there somewhere else not its regular site. So, that this periodic repetition is what is disturbed by its displacement from this location to a neighboring interstitial void or some other void space. So, that is what is called a Frankel defect. Now, the other kind of defects which is uh, also quite likely is a substitutional impurity atom like this. Say for example, in sodium chloride I add potassium chloride. So, chlorine goes to replace the chlorine, but potassium goes to replace the sodium that is what it is. It substitutes for the sodium that is a substitutional impurity at term of the cation right that is another possibility the impurities can be present like that. Now, then there could be merely a cation vacancy and the crystal is still electrically neutral. cation vacancy crystal is still electrically neutral. This kind of a defect in ionic crystals is a defect structure is caused by the fact cations have more than one valencies. Such are the cases when we have cations from the first long period or the second long period or the third long period transition series where the atoms are showing more than one valency. So, for example, iron can be seen in valency 2, can be seen in valency 3. If I have FeO iron oxide, where all the iron ions are supposed to have double valence, valency 2, 2 plus, but if say I have 2 ions introduced which have the valency 3. To make it electrically neutral, one of the 
bivalent ion should be missing from its location. One of the bivalent ions should be missing from its location that is what it is. So that it becomes electrically neutral. But a crystal the material you have is no more the formula FeO. If it is Fe 1 minus XO is less than 1 then X can be a very small fraction of 1 okay. So that is possible that happens in ionic crystals that happens in all these compounds of transition metals usually okay. Similarly I can also have an interstitial impurity atom like this a small interstitial impurity it goes and sits in the interstitial is again some kind of a smaller cation with having some charge on it that is going to go inside the, imp the impurity can be there if again the valencies of these is not same everywhere if they are showing more than one valencies it is possible for something else to come in additionally. So that is again to make it electrically neutral okay. So these are the kind of defects which we have but most commonly if I talk of a pure crystal I would have this or that either I shall have Schottky imperfections or I shall have Frankel imperfections. Now I will show you the how is the increase in enthalpy and corresponding increase in configuration entropy and what is the result of this on the free energy of the material. Let us say I consider the situation of vacancies in a crystal the simplest thing to understand and do okay because these vacancies could come about in the material without any external assistance. If there is the atom not sitting in a place I do not have to do anything for this. If a substitutional atom is sitting there in copper a zinc atom is sitting zinc atom has to be added from outside in a pure copper crystal where does it come from on its own it cannot come but vacancies can be there vacancy can be present on its own atom for example can just oscillate and an oscillation can jump over the face and wherever it has come from there it becomes a vacancy it is all close to the surface only then from something from inside can come and jump into that location during oscillations then vacancy can go down further. So vacancies can be there in the crystal I will show you that how the vacancies get created or they can get annihilated from the crystal number of ways it can happen but no external assistance is required nothing has to be added from outside that is why I am considering vacancy it is a very simple situation. Let us consider capital N as the total number of atomic sites in the crystal out of this total number N let us say small n is a number of vacant locations of the vacancies. So I have total capital N minus small n number of atoms in my system and small n is the number of vacancies we will show you that small n is much much greater than capital N usually. So small n is the number of vacancies capital N is total locations n minus n is the number of atoms and I showed you that there is going to be either increase in bond but usually in this case the bond lengths will increase near about there in that region and therefore the bond energies go up and the enthalpy increases of the crystal because of one vacancy let me call this delta H sub F that is enthalpy increase due to one vacancies or we simply call the enthalpy of formation of a vacancy. When a vacancy is formed in a crystal delta HF is the energy increase of the neighboring bonds and that is the enthalpy increase and correspondingly number of configuration in the system can go up and that change in the entropy the configuration entropy okay. Let us call that delta S I am not putting the subscript C here only delta S let us say because I am trying to see that at a given temperature 
the vacancy is there, vacancy is not there. So, thermal entropy is not coming into the picture. So, I can write delta S, we have done this before. K times K is the Boltzmann constant times n log n minus small n natural logarithm small n minus capital N minus small n logarithm capital N minus small n. See this has come from where? This has come from the configurational entropy of the mixture, mixture of atoms and vacancies which we have talked about earlier K log W. and W is equal to n factorial this total number of sites divided by small n factorial the number of vacancies and capital N minus small n factorial which is the number of atoms And when I take the log of this, use the Stirling's approximation, I can write that. The small n is very small, but in terms of numbers, when I talk about 10 to the power 23 atoms, it is a very large number. Okay. Even if it happens to be a fraction of 10 to the power minus 17, out of 10 to the power 23 atoms, how many vacancies will be there? 10 to the power 6. And 10 to the power 6 is much, much greater than 1. I can use this Stirling's approximation. All right. Then I can write down the free energy delta G, which is delta H minus T delta S. Delta S I already got. So delta H is what I have to work out. Delta HF is the enthalpy of formation of one vacancy. Since I have n vacancies. So, it is n into delta h sub f minus delta s into t. So, k into t within bracket n log n minus n minus n log n minus n. If it is reducing or making it to for certain number the minimum, I can find that out by differentiating this with respect to n and putting the derivative to 0. If we do that, let us see what do we get. Uh, all right. Start here only. When I differentiate this with respect to small n, I get delta H F minus. First term shall give me zero because capital N is a constant. Then I differentiate the second term. I get minus logarithm of n. And second term, when I differentiate, I will get uh, minus n by n, that is minus 1. Uh, similarly, if we differentiate this, I shall be getting plus, because minus n I have differentiated, will become minus minus 1 and logarithm of n minus n. Similarly, when I differentiate this, it will give me 1 upon n minus n which will cancel with this, but the derivative of this will be again minus 1, so I shall be getting plus 1. All right, this minus 1 cancels with this plus 1 and the bracket gives me delta HF minus KT logarithm of <coughs> all right that is what I get delta T and this I have put equal to 0 if it is going through a minimum let us do that what do we get Let us rewrite this. (coughs) 
all right let me take minus on both sides so this will become <laughs> logarithm of small n upon now if i assume that small n is less than less than capital n so then i can take capital n minus small n approximately equal to capital n if i do that this becomes logarithm of small n upon capital n and this i refer to as fraction of vacancies all right so we got this natural logarithm of fraction of vacancies is equal to minus delta h by kt if i can rewrite this whole term again so we can rewrite this uh we have got minus delta hf by kt is equal to i take exponential on both sides then i can write small n upon capital n equal to exponential of minus you can find out the second derivative and see that that second derivative is positive in other words this is the minimum this makes the delta g minimum if there is a fraction of vacancies present in a crystal which shall make it minimum the free energy to be minimum therefore it is in thermodynamic this fraction is in thermodynamic equilibrium now just to show you that as i talked about small n is a very small number this fraction you work out usually delta hf is in the range of about an electron volt let's say point point 8 electron volt to about 1.2 electron volt and kt at room temperature 300 kelvin is about 1 upon 40th of an electron volt so exponential of minus 40 is of the order of 10 to the power Minus seventeen. So this number for delta H F equal to one electron volt. Small n by n at three hundred Kelvin is equal to or approximately ten to the power minus seventeen. So you can see that small n is a much smaller number at room temperature. most crystals are in this range at room temperature for diamond this delta hf is 2 electron volts because of a very strong sp3 bond when delta hf is 2 electron volt what shall be this number 10 to the power minus 34 very right that means to see one vacancy you must have tens about 34 carbon atoms in the diamond crystal work out the size of the crystal how many tons of diamond you should have to see one vacancy at room temperature tens about 34 atoms of carbon 6 into tens about 23 atoms just weigh 12 grams okay you can see how many grams you need leave it to you 
it will turn out to be in turns ok. All right, having had a look at these are the defects which are in thermodynamic equilibrium by and large point defects are in thermodynamic equilibrium as I said already showed with the point defects. So, they are in thermodynamic equilibrium, they are there in all real crystals. Now on what defects I talk of, whether I talk of the line defects or I talk of the surface defects, the dislocations uh, and the surface defects are the various names we will give them, they are never in thermodynamic equilibrium, let me tell you that. That is the enthalpy increase by their presence is not getting compensated by the increase in the configurational entropy like it was happening in the point defects. So, they are not in thermodynamic equilibrium, but in real crystal they are present, they are there and we cannot get rid of them. We try, but they can be minimized, they can be reduced, but they come out in the crystal at various occasions while handling, while using, while manufacturing but we are not able to get rid of them. So, therefore, we have to understand these though they are not in thermodynamic equilibrium let us understand that. Dislocation has said the line defects to understand these line defects we shall start with straight lines first and then we shall move on to the curvilinear lines which are the general situation in the crystal two straight lines are named one is edge another is screw. We shall try to look at the edge and then we shall move on to the screw ok. First thing we shall look at is the edge. In here I show a simple cubic crystal not very complex situation I will demonstrate this with the help of a very simple crystal is a simple cubic crystal. In here I have shown the vertical planes arranged parallel to each other at the regular spacing and these are the vertical planes you see these are the vertical planes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 this is 6 unit cells you can say in between but of course I am showing these and these are all full planes complete planes from top of the crystal to the bottom of the crystal each one of them. In the middle I have shown one more plane which is perpendicular plane somewhere in the middle and these are the lines which I sh uh, show here they are the intersection of these vertical planes with this horizontal plane. It is a crystalline arrangement the planes are going from top to the bottom of the crystal they are complete planes these are called complete planes. Such a crystal is perfect as of this it does not have any line imperfection all planes are going from top to bottom no problems. Problem arises when one of these planes let us say in the middle this one below this plane horizontal plane here does not have this part no atoms are placed here. When no atoms are placed here that is in this area in this area no atoms are placed what would happen the atoms which are placed in this plane atoms which are placed in this plane they become too far they will try to come closer because they will like to form bonds and they come together because this is this is this is atoms in this this plane are missing. In the word this plane I call an incomplete plane. Let us see what happens when I have an incomplete plane. Let us show it here. One of the planes in the middle is incomplete. So, what happens to the neighboring planes?
and if I make all the unit cells see the region here these bonds here are much shorter than the bond which is here in other words this place atoms which are placed here they are in tension and these atoms which are placed here these are in compression but as I go away from this region I go here I do not find that problem here I do not find this problem here they are the usual length as I go away from there but these strains or the strains in the bonds they are present only in this region which is around this place what is this place so I call it the edge of the part plane so I call it the edge of the part plane and this edge of the part plane is what I refer to as edge dislocation please make this configuration by hand to understand this better we shall start from here the next class mm -hmm.